Hey, good Sunday morning, everybody. It's Chief Meteorologist Brian Penovich. Update on Isaias as it was trying to re-strengthen last night, but never really got together. I know a lot of folks saw that explosion of thunderstorms and thought, ah, oh, you know, it's trying to get back together. But it's still struggling, honestly, structurally and with dry air and wind shear. Let's show you the latest. Now, this was the 8 a.m. advisory. There's not going to be a lot of change, so that's why I'm doing my, my vlog a little bit early here. So I'm going to play this. And I'm going to stop it right about here. So you can see um, by 2 a.m. Monday, it's going to be off Myrtle Beach. And again, could be hugging the coast here. The only reason that's somewhat important is obviously more rain and a little bit of wind along the Florida coast. That actually could weaken the system even more as it comes to the north. Regardless, the Hurricane Center is going to maintain it as a 65 mile per hour um, tropical storm. The most direct impact right now looks to be somewhere in the Carolinas. Um, and that's likely going to be around the Grand Strand. Could be Georgetown, uh, just northeast of Charleston, but it looks like somewhere in here. And again, there's not a lot of wiggle room. It could be this far west, but unlikely. It could be a little further east. The air now is pretty small. It's somewhere in here. And the impacts, again, are going to be along and east of the center. So the further west you get away from the center, you will, you will feel any impacts. Now, it doesn't mean it's not going to rain in the Western Carolinas. I'll talk more about it in a minute, but that's because of something completely different and maybe some moisture from EIS, but not directly related. Uh, but you can see it moving through Eastern North Carolina, pretty much moving straight up I-95 and up into the Delmarva Peninsula by Tuesday and then up into the Northeast as it becomes extra tropical. So let's look at the satellite imagery. Uh, pretty impressive when you start looking at this from the visible standpoint. You know, it's got that great outflow um, coming out of it. We've got big thunderstorms here, and you can actually see the low-level streamers coming in there. The problem is, when you look at this structurally on radar and from recon, it's not quite as, you know, beautiful, <laughs> if you will. Uh, here's a look at the radar overlaid on the satellite. So you see all those clouds, and there's, there's just no rain there or precipitation. The storms are kind of more in the mid-level center. So if you notice, the low-level center has been here. It's forecast to move there. All those big thunderstorms you're seeing on satellite and radar are actually displaced. Um, that's not a real good sign of an organized system. These should be under or over the top of that, or the low-level center should be over here. Now, that could still happen, but... This is probably more an impact of the southwesterly shear is pushing these storms off to the east and the low level center is staying there. So while it looks impressive on satellite, you start pulling it up on the radar and you're like, wow, they're not the low level center and the big thunderstorms aren't in the same spot. They're tilted. They need to be on top of each other, which would make a deeper, stronger system. There is a very narrow window in the next, I'd say, 12 hours where it's over very warm water that it could happen and re-strengthen, but that's becoming less and less likely with time. And part of the reason that's less and less likely is we've got this big trough. Look at this thing right here coming down. I'll let this loop a couple times. This is an abnormally strong trough for the, for the beginning of August. This is going to supply, and it's already starting to supply, the southwesterly shear, which is uh, uh, affecting it today. So the further north it gets and the closer this gets to it, the only thing that happens is that wind shear increases. So the environment is not getting more favorable with time. So it's running out of time, basically, to get stronger. So like I said yesterday, I do not see this thing cranking up into a more significant system. In fact, the guidance has been pretty straightforward. I mean, every piece of information you look at shows consistently weak hurricane at best or worst for most people, but probably a moderately strong tropical storm and then falling off pretty quickly as it moves to the north and east. And I'll show you the spaghetti plots. They're, they're pretty tightly clustered, honestly. I mean, they're right there where the circulation is expected to go. And we've got tons of, tons of airplane data now from the upper air, uh, go, uh, a Gulf Stream. We've got NOAA and uh, Air Force reconnaissance has been out there pretty much nonstop. So I don't think you're going to see a lot of change in this track. It's going to be subtle, shifting 20, 30, 40 miles, maybe 50 miles max. The big story is going to be what type of intensity, and more so, I think, rainfall. Rainfall, to me, is going to be one of the biggest issues we have to deal with. So let me show you real quickly the tropical storm watches and warnings up for uh, South Carolina, tropical storm warnings all the way to that Georgetown area, and then it becomes a tropical storm watch. These will likely be expanded at some point, and these will be upgraded. We're not going to see any kind of hurricane watches or warnings. It's going to stay strictly, uh, strictly tropical storm um, warnings and watches. Here's a look at the timing. I'll kind of move my head up here so you can see it. 
Um, so this is for South Carolina, Hilton Head, Charleston, Folly, Kiwa, um, Georgetown, Myrtle Beach, North Myrtle Beach, Sunset Beach. Notice the time frame, probably late afternoon, Monday into early Tuesday. So really Monday night into Tuesday morning. The time frame hasn't changed. The only place that shows the possibility of a hurricane force gust is Folly because it's going to be sticking out there just close enough when it's still maybe a strong tropical storm. doesn't mean it's going to be a hurricane. just means you might see a gust to 70 miles per hour. For North Carolina, here's the same graphic. You can see pretty much more Tuesday morning. And I say Tuesday morning. I'm talking after midnight Monday night. So 12 a.m. to like 9 a.m. looks to be the time frame with Kitty Hawk and Hatteras seeing the, the last of this on Tuesday morning as it moves up into the northeast. Um, just to show you those probabilities of uh, seeing the tropical storm force winds, you could see the track is really, really clear here. Along, here's this track. And notice how the worst winds are just east. And you go back to the west, the chance of seeing tropical storm force winds uh, drop off pretty quickly. Just in case there is some hurricane force winds in there, let me show you those. If we're going to see a gust, it's the chances are between 0 and 6% from Charleston, the Myrtle Beach to the Wilmington area. So not huge probabilities. To me, the biggest issue with this system is gonna be rainfall. Um, and let me show you the rainfall forecast because to me, this is the real deal as far as the impacts for the Carolinas. Right along the track, we're gonna see significant rainfall of three to six inches. So localized flooding is a, is a, is a sure bet. We'll likely see flood warnings. Now back to the West for the Carolinas, uh, uh, west of I-95 and back in my region, um, we're going to see some heavy rain because that same trough that's coming in to kick this thing out is going to interact with it a little bit and squeeze out some moisture. So we will see some very heavy rain um, in the mountains and foothills, but not directly associated with East IS. Some of the moisture, you could probably make a claim that that's it, but it's more likely going to be because of that trough. And you can see these are the flood watches up um, along the South Carolina coast, up into central and eastern North Carolina. And then you got this little batch up into the mountains of North Carolina and Southwest Virginia. That's because as the storm is, is tracking up this direction, there will be some moisture coming up here. And as that trough swings in, there's gonna be a little squeeze play there, which some of that moisture could get squeezed out with some tropical downpour. So kind of indirectly associated with ESIS, but not directly associated with it. So let me show you the wind field. This is a pretty cool graphic um, as this thing moves north. I like showing this. Shows you how lopsided the wind field is. So there it is. This is Charleston, Georgetown, Myrtle Beach area. And then you can see it moving right into eastern North Carolina. And you see how the drop off, the center's right here. Everything's east of the center um, as it moves into eastern North Carolina. And then you can see by Tuesday morning, it's uh, just east of Raleigh. And then up in the Norfolk area about noon on Tuesday. And then it's gone. It's long gone. So let me show you the future cast because I think this this will show you the structure we're, we're going to see. Notice how it's pretty messy. It doesn't look really defined. It, it's just going to be hugging the coast, taking that turn to the northeast. But then notice the enhancement in rainfall. Um, and you'll see how this becomes more of a comma-shaped system. Uh, it's still pretty open, but there's a big band of rain. And we'll see this oftentimes with a trough coming down. With that trough swinging in from the north and west, um, sometimes this northern part of the storm gets an enhancement in the rainfall because you're getting these uh, bands coming in and you're getting some convergence. And then, you know, in the upper levels of the atmosphere, the wind's divergent like that. So right in this area, kind of the north-northwest quadrant sometimes, which is not always the case with tropical systems, there might be an enhancement in rainfall. So along that track, I-95, certainly on Tuesday morning, Monday night, Tuesday morning, will be something we watch as that moves up. So for now, the biggest impact I would expect in the Carolinas is very heavy rain. And when we get heavy rain on this soil and we get 30, 40 mile an hour winds with a tropical storm, you're going to see some power lines come down and likely some um, trees. So um, that would, to me, is probably the biggest concern. Storm surge, while there is going to be some, isn't going to be crazy. Uh, I'll show you the storm surge potential. Um, this is the the, the height. Uh, water height, maximum water height. You can see around Charleston, some higher water here. Um, and then you get up towards Myrtle Beach, a little bit less, and then up into areas of the Outer Banks. That's not too bad. You know, that's um, that's doable. That's not, it's definitely low-lying areas could see some inundation. I'm going to put max inundation here just so you can see. I'll zoom in. So you can see in and around Charleston, Folly Beach, Sullivan's Island, there's going to be those spots that typically flood 
that are going to see water. Um, and there, uh, there might be Sullivan's Island, the, the intercoastal and, um, the Marshall inter, inter um, with the intertidal region, excuse me, so I'm trying to spit it out. Um, we'll likely see some pretty good flooding there. Um, and then the intercoastal waterway, there's likely going to be some high water up towards uh, the Georgetown area. And then going up into, you know, Myrtle Beach area, you know, you've got a couple spots here, Sunset Beach, there might be a couple spots, you know, the, the, the other side of Holden Beach there, right in the intercoastal, coming up in the marshes there. So those are the type of areas we're probably looking at to see some minor flooding. But to me, um, I still think, you know, by far the biggest issue is going to be this rainfall because you can see it just kind of soaking eastern North Carolina. So to me, that's going to be some of the biggest issues we see as far as this storm is concerned. Of course, I'll be tracking it throughout the day. I'll make any updates. The 11 a.m. advisory should be out here in about um, 40 minutes or so, um, which um, probably not going to see a whole lot of change. There might be some subtle timing changes, but uh, going forward, we're pretty straight straightforward with this. Oh, let me show you the radar real quickly just to show you. Um, I had this set up on the other screen here. I didn't even show you. So just to show you where that mid-level circulation is, this is actually not the low-level circulation. The low-level circulation looks to be just to the west of there. So we'll have to see if those two come together. That's probably a trend I'll watch this afternoon as we go through time. But look at the west side, how relatively dry it is. That's why when this blob moves ashore up in the Carolinas, we're likely going to see some heavy rain.